is here, the set burn is here, and Seth Finch. We got a board member. <laughs> awesome. She is here. Hey, you gotta speak up when we vote on stuff. So. Any motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Move by Red Select. Second it. Second by Moore. By Moore. All in favor? Aye. Right. Pressing card recognition. Ms. Gaines. Thank you, President Gutierrez. Um, I cannot stress how important our crossing guards are to the success of our district and to the safety of all of our students who um, walk to school every single day. And I thought it would be appropriate that we say thank you to them uh, with the certificate by the board members. So board, if you would like to go down there, if all of you would like to go down, or some of you, Mario, to go down, and I will call the names of our crossing guards. And again, I wanna say, we don't say it enough. I, I, I feel so bad that, you know, this is my third year and this is, of course, last year we really weren't walking to school, and and that, but that's still no excuse. We need to thank you and appreciate you for everything you do for our district. And so, forgive me. And today's uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do it more often. So, uh, when I call your name, and hopefully I won't mess your name up too bad, Deborah Slaughter. Deborah Slaughter. Okay. Sadia Brown. <laughs> Beatrice Zikafus. <laughs> Francis Dix. Guillermina Ponce. Oh, Ponce. Ponce. Robert Pistone. <laughs> Joseph Muzzy. Yeah. Take it too. I'll take all of them. That's his mom. Oh, oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm not his wife. No, you're not his mom. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. What were you listening to? Misty Lakebrook. Oh, you're not his wife. And Rosie Mussy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're all welcome to stay, or if you want to leave, you can leave now, but we'd love to have you stay for the meeting. Before they, if they do leave, I want to say thank you. So much for all your hard work and well, keeping mm -hmm. keeping the children safe. I mean, you know, realize, especially now since they got that Starbucks across the street and the traffic. Oh, be safe out there. Whoever has that crossing, <laughs> be safe. Thank you. 
Approval of resolution 212201 authorizing the insured issuance and sales of its general obligation bonds, uh, refinan refinancing bonds 2021 series uh, in a using principal aggregate principal amount not to exceed 1.045, that's 1, 000, 000. Uh, and its general obligation, uh, refinancing bond 2021 series B uh, in a aggregate principal amount not to exceed 9.61 million and approving certain other materials related to said bond. CFW, please. Chris, it's all yours. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chris Garrett with CFW. Very pleased to be here tonight to give you an update. I've been in front of the board a few times before discussing the opportunity to refinance some bonds, which is very similar to a homeowner refinancing their mortgage. It's the lower payments. Uh, and we have an opportunity now, given that we're near historic low interest rates in the market, for the district to be able to refinance some bonds that have previously sold, which in turn would save the taxpayers about over $700,000 based on today's market interest rates. So the process of, of completing the refinancing broadly consists of three components. There's the rating, which is being completed, and now we'll discuss in just a moment. Number two is document adoption, which are the documents for your consideration tonight. If the documents are in fact adopted, we'll go to the third stage, which is pricing the bonds, or uh, it's another way to say to sell the bond and lock in the interest rates and lock in the savings at that point. So if I may, uh, Mr. Gutierrez, I'd like to just go through those three components, starting with the uh, rating, which has already been completed. I'm very pleased to say that the rating agencies, your, your, your staff, uh, uh, Superintendent Gaines and Mr. Irving, <coughs> interviewed with rating analysts in San Francisco, uh, actually one was in Denver and one was in San Francisco uh, via Zoom, for about an hour and a half, where those rating analysts of S&P Global, which is one of the leading rating agencies, spent a lot of time because they were troubled by the finances of the district a couple of years ago. Uh, they were very pleased to see the work that the board and the staff has done since then of not only repaying the county loan, but also strengthening the district's financial position. They were also impressed with how you've been looking at expenses and where expenses could be reduced uh, to be able to reduce the expenses. The outreach that this board has been doing to be able to maintain your ADA and your enrollment. And also, the, the resilience and the strength of your community, uh, you are not immune from the recession, but unlike many other communities that are not as well established as yours and as desirable as yours, uh, the, uh, you did not take a hit in your assessed valuation during the Great Recession to the extent some other communities did. All of these factors were very positive, were viewed very strongly and very well by the rating analysts, and uh, the district's current rating is an A minus. They did not change the A minus yet to an A, which we're expecting and we're hoping will happen very soon. But what they did say is they changed the outlook on the rating, which is a key factor. Your original rating was stable, which is they previously had indicated to the district they anticipated you would be staying at the A minus level. Last week they changed the outlook to positive, which is to say that SP expects and anticipates to be able to increase your rating over time. Uh, it'll probably be an A, uh, uh, and then we should be able to take it up to an A+. plus. That's where I anticipate the rating for your district ought to be. And where at one time in the past, prior to your session, you were at. So 
working with your staff, it is our intent to take you up to an A-plus rating over time. The main reason that was stated why we did not get a, the, the rating uh, change to an A and why they gave us a positive output and not a rating change at this time uh, was because uh, while our financial performance has improved substantially, those records aren't audited yet. We haven't completed the audit for the last fiscal year for 2020-21. And they want to see a year or two of audited statements. Yes, they trust you. Yes, on that basis, they're giving you the positive outlook. But as as a uh, good practice for their investors, they need to ultimately base their rating on the audit. So when your audits are published next year, we'll go back to the rating agencies. You don't have to sell bonds. You don't have to pay them to do them. We'll go back and ask for a review. Uh, most likely, may, they may want to see two cycles of audits before they get the review. But where I'm going to pause and compliment all you, you folks on for all the work you've been doing is clearly the path of the rating, which had dropped in the past, has been changed, and the trajectory is now upwards. And if the district is able to continue with this good financial performance and the pragmatic financial management, I fully anticipate we will see an A rating and then return it to an A-plus rating over time. And once again, it's not, we don't have to sell bonds. Uh, anytime there's an event, a major event like the audits coming out on an annual basis, our rating will be reviewed. We'll continue to inform your staff, and our goal is to work with your staff to improve that. But I want to say that that was not an easy task. Uh, when, they, when we went to the rating agency the last time they talked to us, we were still under county purview. We could still be loan from the county. And I do want to compliment the work the board has done and the presentation that your staff made uh, to, the rate, to the analyst, which was very clear, very concise, and right to the point, and they were able to successfully mitigate the concerns the analyst had in advance. So kudos to the district on turning around the trend. I'm looking forward to the day when I'm standing in front of you and saying, all right, we got the A, now we're on the way to the A+. plus." Not quite there yet, but clearly uh, in the rating report, is that they have recognized the work you've done in writing, and they have indicated that it is their intent, that you've turned the corner, and it's their intent to take your rating on. So sorry to take up so much of your time on this one, but I, I'm passionate and very proud of, of what the district has done over here. Okay. And we will get you back to an A-plus rating uh, as if you can uh, maintain the, uh, the good financial performance that you've been doing. So that was the rating component. We now have the rating. Uh, the next step will be the resolutions and certain other documents for the board's consideration tonight. If the board were to adopt those documents, we'll get to the third stage, which is about two weeks out. We will go, we will go into the market to price the bonds. And what price the bonds is essentially is the district, your staff, uh, myself and, and others from my firm, and the county treasurer will get on a phone call and we'll talk about the interest rates that the underwriter, which is the broker who buys the bonds, is proposing for the district. Obviously, we want to see that interest rate as low as possible. The lower we can get that rate, the more our savings are. And so it's a negotiation that works. Uh, it's one of the incredible businesses where you would sell, you're selling about $10 million of bonds with a phone call on the spoken word. Everything eventually will get memorialized and written, but on um, student and gains uh, acceptance of the interest rates and, and corresponding saving levels, verbally, the bonds will be sold and the interest rates will be locked in. About two weeks after that, uh, the transaction closes and the county will be provided a new debt service or bond repayment schedule, which will contain lower amounts than what is currently on the books. This does not put any money into the district directly, this is not new construction funds, this is just an opportunity to, for the board to continue uh, to be good stewards of the taxpayers' money, uh, the board, the district is, the board has been very supportive of historically, and it is an opportunity to refinance some bonds uh, to be able to lower interest rates, um, it's something that districts may want to consider doing. The last item I had, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is to just give you, try and do my best to give you a look in the crystal ball. When we started this process, we had initially said that this, the savings were about a half a million dollars. When I had come to the board, I think it was about in, two, in early June or mid-June, I had estimated the savings to be about a little over $700,000. Since then, the interest rates actually went up. 
But then when the fear of the Delta variant kicked in, uh, interest rates actually started going down. Uh, bad news in the economy is good news for bonds. Because when there's bad news in the economy, folks want to go and buy bonds. That's the most secure investment you can have. Uh, and so the interest rates actually dropped in August. The savings went up a little bit over $800,000. Since then, interest rates have peaked up a little bit again, and we're back to the mid $700,000 range of the lead savings today. Uh, please understand that that's an estimate as of today. The number could be higher, we hope, or it could be lower, uh, but it will not be locked in until the time of a bond sale. If the number is higher, presumably we'll be very pleased to come back and respond with the positive results. If the numbers are lower, your superintendent and your staff will determine at what point of savings they want to take. If the savings drop from 700 down to 600, maybe it still makes sense. If the savings go all the way down to $200,000, you probably want to say, you know what, I'm going to wait for another day and see if I can do better at some time in the future. The entire team, except for the rating agency, works on a contingent basis. So the district decides not to proceed with the transaction or delay the transaction. The district doesn't know anyone any money is paid. If the transaction is successful, all the consultants are paid out of the fees, uh, out of the savings. So there's never an impact to the district. And when I'm quoting savings, originally 500, up to 800, down to about 750, those are all after all costs. So I know it's a lot of information, ladies and gentlemen, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Is the, uh, the A minus and the A, what is the difference in the interest rate that we could receive? Great question, sir. It's uh, normally I would say that the difference is about 10 basis points, which is one tenth of a percent uh, between each rating scale. Uh, there's two factors that will probably help us squeeze that 10, 10, one tenth of a percent down. One is the positive outlook. We're going to take that and we're going to have the underwriters market the heck out of that, saying that, you know what, why don't you buy these bonds now? They're going to be worth more money very shortly when you get upgraded. So why don't you give us, I know you won't give us an equivalent to an A, but surely you're going to give us more than an A minus. And the second factor uh, that your superintendent actually asked me about is in addition to this, we're going to go to an insurance company. Uh, and there's two insurers in the market today, BAM and ATM. These are folks with millions of dollars sitting in the cash at, at, in, in the bank. And we will ask them for a quote to say, go sign my loan. Those folks, since they have a bunch of cash in the bank, have a rating of a double A. They're rated double A. So when we sell our bonds, we will be selling it with an A minus underlying rating, but a double A in short rating. So it gives the investors some more comfort that for any reason in the Southern Bank Price School District cannot pay back the bonds. Uh, the uh, uh, the insurer uh, is serving the back service. It's like if someone goes signing a loan. Those two factors will change. Having said that, uh, there still, sir, will be a difference between an A minus and an A, even with a positive outlook. Our goal is with the positive outlook with insurance is to work to minimize that spread. Uh, to maximize that. Mr. Krish, if I can ask a question, just so for clarity, I think, uh, so everyone understands. When we lower the interest rate uh, of the uh, bond, the taxpayers see this in by their tax bills that become lower. Am I correct? You're exactly right, so you're gains, and I, I missed that critical component between the interest rate and, and the savings. Just like a home mortgage, if you have a lower interest rate, you have a lower monthly payment. The same is true over here, we're able to lower the interest rate. It means bonds are not paid monthly, they're paid semi-annually in your tax bills that you've paid in December and April. But that effect, essentially, those savings, as compared to paying over market rates to investors, and there was nothing wrong when the bonds were done. When the bonds were done, that was the prevailing interest rate at that time. But shouldn't be the is exactly right. What does all this interest rate discussion mean, ultimately, it means a higher rating, a lower interest rate, benefits the taxpayers in the form of lower taxes. Okay. I will call for a roll call vote for issuing uh, the resale of our bonds to lower the taxes to the public. Uh, Mr. Commander? Yes. Ms. Ever? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Rensselaer? Yes. And me? Yes. 
So we have five eyes. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your fingers crossed for the next two weeks. <laughs> the interest rates stay low, and there's no good news in the market. I know we want good news otherwise, but for the purpose of the bond, hopefully the good news comes in 15 days from now, not 14 days. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, President Gutierrez, may I ask at this time that we move um, Mr. Um, Ortiz's presentation, HC, to um, in front of um, Reports and Communications? Good evening, um, President Gutierrez, Superintendent Gaines, and board members. Um, we have a brief presentation. We wanted to discuss the redesign of Tropical Middle School and recommend a path forward. Um, so, um, you had a conversation um, with Greg Norman, I believe it was the last board meeting, or two board meetings a month ago. And um, in the in the presentation, they identified that the state uh, the state allocated twenty three point seven million dollars for the redesign of Tropical Middle School about ten years ago, and that money is at the state, um, and, and you're in the in the workload list that's that's identified here for twenty three point seven million dollars. Go to the next slide, certainly. And of that, 2.2 million was already allocated to the district for the initial design process related to that that school. Let's go to the next one. So that leaves 21.5 million dollars of remaining allocation that the state has already um, identified that should go to Tropical Middle School for, for a redesign. So what was identified that that redesign should have at least 10 years ago? It was 26 general education classrooms and two uh, uh, non-severe classrooms. So a total of 28 classrooms. That's about 28,000 square feet. If you take the, the average size of classrooms and the average size of non-severe classrooms. So first question I had was, and, and, and the entire construction team, design team, uh, was can we build 28 classrooms for $21 million um, in today's economy? And the answer is yes. Um, we took Rosemont Elementary School project as a baseline and used the total construction project costs of that project, um, which were, were building, as you all know, the uh, kindergarten, uh, six kindergarten classrooms. Um, so so the answer is that with 28,000 square feet at today's cost, we can build um, those classrooms with the funding available. That was the first, you know, does it pass this not that but can we accomplish this with the amount of money that the state would, would provide? So the answer is yes. Let's go to the next. Any, any questions on this? Please feel free to ask questions as we go on. What's a non-severe classroom? It's a special ed classroom. It's just um, non, that's a classification, non-severe. It's mild, also called mild moderate. Okay, let's let's move on to the next one. So, also in, in the presentation two weeks ago, two weeks ago, there was identification of the next steps, which was CDE approval, DSA approval, and then ultimately the project funding. What I'd like to um, include in this next slide, Sally, is the specific deadlines for each one of these. If we're to uh, be able to access this funding. So for CDE approval, we need to have CDE approval by the end of this year. 
and that involves programming the, the project, designing to a certain extent the project to design development, and um, developing a program that CE would, the, the California Department of Education would approve. In order to achieve that um, approval by the end of the year, we would have to submit to CDE by November 1st. So by November 1st, we would have to submit the program, the design, the initial design up to design development, and fill in several paperwork that, that needs to be submitted. That's one milestone that would need to be met in order to uh, access some funding. Second milestone would be to have DSA approval by June 30th of 2022. So again, in order to achieve DSA approval, we would be looking to submit to DSA about the beginning of February. Does that make sense? Once we get DSA approval by the end of June, we would submit to the state application board and fill in all, fill all the paperwork so that in at the November meeting they would award this uh, this funding to the tropical project we don't get the money in November we get it until May of the following year because they have to uh, it goes into the next state bond sale for for these types of funding so it would be until May of 2023, when we would actually get the fund. Check in, in bank account. Or the county bank account. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's go to one, one thing that's critical. Before we're able to get to CDE approval, we need to design the project. This is a big step. So, so we need to if the board were to want to go down this path, we need to hire an architect for this project. And let's go to the next one, sorry. So in conversations with your um, current architect who's doing Rosemont Elementary School, we had a long discussion. Can we make these timelines was the first question I had. And what would it take to be able to accomplish this? So, this schedule came directly from the architect. I reviewed it. I believe it is it is very achievable. Let's go to the next one. This is a, the two lines that would take us to CDE, submit to CDE November 1st, and ultimately get approval by the end of the year. This would require a lot of activities happening in a very short order. Um, from now until then. I believe they're all very doable. We can certainly do it, but we need to start very quickly. Let's go to the next one. And this is the path to get to DSA approval by end of June of next year, 2022. Any questions about this? Right, let's go to the next one, Sean. So, ultimately, um, I think after analyzing where the district is in terms of the amount of money that's available to the district, um, our recommendation would be, or the path forward that we would recommend would be to start the design process as soon as humanly possible so we can meet these deadlines because otherwise um, the access to the money will be over. There's a challenge in that there's a cash flow issue at least initially because the 21 million dollars wouldn't be available until May of 2023. So there's funds required from now until then to get the design process going 
to be able to get those the approvals required along the way. So there's that piece would need to be solved, obviously, um, prior to moving forward. Do you have an estimate on what that may be? The, the, yes, for the design. The initial cash outlay from now until May of 2023, probably a little over $2 million. Okay. However, um, the, the architect I know has made a, a commitment of lowering their their uh, fee at least until getting PSA approval, so or CDE approval, so to minimize that cash flow impact, if you will. Yeah. And this would be basically the same as what we're doing with the kindergarten classrooms. Yes. yes. Uh, I can't hear you. Just a kind of a, a side question. Uh, who did uh, Jack Northbrook elementary school? I do not know. I just happened to be in that area the other day, and it looks similar to what we're doing. Okay. I wrote one. And that's a pretty cool thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Uh, I was trying to look on here. It's a little small. I never wear my glasses. How much time do you have uh, of the Division of State Architect for approval? I believe it's about four months. About four months? Yeah. Yes. Do you think that's feasible? Yes. Yes. Um, the, the type of buildings that, like, we're using at, at the elementary school um, have pre-approved um, designs with DSA, so that helps accelerate the process a little bit. It allows for the time. Line. Do we still have to go out and build them? Yes. So it would be after the funding that we'll start breaking ground. Uh, correct. <laughs> you're before we break ground. Yes. After the funding, after the funding, after the funding. but at that funding, at, at, at that point when we actually get the funding, the project's already designed. It's ready to ready to bid. Well, if I mean, there's so many. I mean, you got some close dates on here. I was reading some of them: two days, three days, one day. Uh, man, I mean, it's going to be really tight. Yeah. And and we need to manage that process with that uh, goal in mind. The problem is we got to put up two billion dollars up front. And right. if we miss one of these dates, we're probably going to be in trouble. You lose that two billion dollars. Well, lose the funding. Yeah. If you miss one of those dates, you'll know. By December. And at that point, I think we would be out a couple hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, correct. That's for the, um, the architect to redesign. Right, correct. Right. For CD. Just to get the CD approved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
the issue here, as I see it, is it's very hard to, um, there's a little risk in the timeline to get that, but it's also a little bit difficult to walk away from $21 million. That is, that is. And, and ultimately, you would get 28 new classrooms, you know, at the middle school. That's, that's important. And they said last time we're guaranteed on books right now this $20 million? Yes, that's, that's in the state books right now. And your, your company's going to watch this? We're, we're going to be on top of it every day. Guarantee your company can do this? <laughs> well, we, we're building Rosemont Elementary for you right now. And um, it's just a time to live in. I mean, it's been figuring this for. It very well got our COVID and entering the paperwork for 10 days. I mean, yeah. we're, in, we're in a different environment right yeah. now. I mean, you're absolutely right. We could get shut down. Yeah. So that's two hundred thousand dollars. We could gain twenty-one billion, but we could be throwing away two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 That's a that's tough. I agree with you, Jim. But you know the old there's an old saying in motion. You got to determine. The military up on your phone, so. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is that you either you either plan for the day and. In, in my opinion, risking two hundred thousand to potentially earn gain twenty one point three million is a good deal. So, if we decided to move forward. If we decided to do that, then the, we would provide ed, ed specs tomorrow that would begin tomorrow to get this first phase started, right? Started again, yes. There, there would, there would um, be a future board item, I'm sure, to you know, memorialize the contracts with the yeah, with the right you could see it. Uh, we okay. wanted to, to get direction for us which way to go. Yeah. Uh, if, if you think that we can uh, do it for the 21 that we're going to get, then my big story was that in today's dollars compared to what it was 10 years ago when we submitted, it was going to be so much more. I, I was thinking somewhere around 30, 31, 32 million to, to do that process. With, with, I think the original project had a lot of other stuff associated. Correct. And so a lot of that other stuff is no longer going to be in the scope at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the calculations I did was based on the prices that we're getting right now at Rosemont Elementary. Um, that was that change in two years? I, I included some escalation. Yes. It, without a doubt, it will change. Yeah. Um, I did include some escalation costs going forward. Fifteen percent, ten percent a year. Okay. So for three, three years to get to midpoint of construction, um, the I have a little note here, just quickly. The project over there is five million dollars project cost, which includes design fees and all the okay. permitting, etc. At 8,600 square feet that we're building, it was about 578,000 square foot. So that multiplied by three years of escalation of 10 percent takes us to 752 dollars a square foot in 2024. So just based on that level of analysis, we can do the 28,000 square feet for 21.3 million dollars. Okay. And, and Mr. Bender, to your point, there are no guarantees. I mean, because there's COVID and, and stuff that happens. But I mean, 
but based on the information that we have at hand, which is the way that I guess we, that's the only way we can make a decision based on what we have at hand currently, um, the numbers pan out. In the construction meetings, we were like 9 o'clock. I'm barely dropping kids off at that time. That's true. Uh, you see the mild eyes? You're with mild ears? Kind of thing. Did we look at Tropico area where we're going to build these and, and talk well, about all and see if there's anything that we're going to run into, like some uh, pipes underneath the ground? We haven't, we haven't, been we haven't done anything at all. Anything like that? Yeah. And I guarantee you we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's a it is a risk, but I think we need to take uh, I think you could benefit this the yeah. children a great deal with I mean, oh yeah, we get rid of a lot of the classrooms that are falling apart over there. Yeah. Will it replace some existing classrooms or are it just brand new classrooms? Well, these will all be brand new. We'll be eliminating a lot of the old uh, affordable over there. Okay. Yeah. Right now, we haven't designed anything. Right now, it's just a blank slip. Okay. So, um, we need to get going on defining what we're what we're going to build mm -hmm. and then the, the once we define the architect needs to start drawing like quickly okay. to get it to see so we we'll develop uh we you said we have to to see okay and get it going yeah we'll, we'll bring that back on this is an action item just for you to want to move forward and bring it back Yes, sir. No, we should be the redesign on the letter C. Page four. So we're going to jump ahead to uh, number C, which is uh, an action for allowing to redesign the uh, tropical. Uh, to leverage the state funding. Um, I will make a motion to deliver it on meetings. I'll second it. That. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Wilson, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Sorry. I still remember I didn't do it. I'm an agent. Yeah. Three, two, and a board member. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Now we can go back to reports and reports. Okay. CSEA, do we have a report? Administration and the classified staff. 
We have questions that I hope you're willing to answer for us tonight so that we may put an end to constant uncertainty and rumors. One of the biggest issues pertains to COVID-19 testing and mass rules. A number of tests have gone missing, the main dates being Monday, August 23rd, and Tuesday, August 24th. What happened? Why are the staff and students that tested able return to, to return to work or school before receiving their results? There have also been a number of complaints in regards to the way the testing site is run. Is the board aware that individuals with symptoms are placed within one to two feet of others to pull their masks down and administer the test? Regarding the mask rules and mandate, why do PE teachers and staff not need to wear a mask outside while other employees do? These questions lead to an even bigger concern pertaining to COVID and the COVID stipend. Three district office employees are being given a COVID stipend of $10,000. Was there an option for other employees to apply for this? What does this position entail to constitute the salary of $10,000? Most importantly, where is this money coming from? We now have two assistant superintendent positions when there was only one before, costing an increase of $50,000. Is this the best way to spend our funds when classified employees haven't seen a raise in a number of years? Should more of the revenue be allocated towards the staff that are working directly with students? Above all, why is there a stipend for a position that does not seem to be executed properly? Lastly, we do not understand why we do not understand that everyone is stretched, or we understand that everyone is stretched thin at the moment. Positions are flown with no applications received, and a large number of employees are affected by the pandemic. That being said, why is the district not allowing available employees to work two positions, at least in the meantime? It has been done before, especially in transportation and food service. Why not in other positions? Will you allow classified employees to work more than one position if they do not exceed eight hours? This could be a great help with after school activities in regards to safety and security. We have many of our members willing to step up and help. We appreciate your willingness to listen and answer our questions. The most important thing is making sure that we are a team and we are supporting one another while making our students our top priority. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful evening. Sincerely, on behalf of CSA Chapter 587, Mark Nauman and Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hopefully I can remember the gist. I know, I apologize. No, 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 it's not necessary. I, let's, let's talk first about August 23rd and August 24th, the tests. I, I want to make it very clear to everyone who's watching or listening this evening that it doesn't matter in, in the district if we have one test a day or 30 tests a day. We drop the tests off every single day, Monday through Friday. They are dropped off at the facility that was recommended to the district to drop off our test. Our courier is FedEx. We, we've been dropping off tests now for, I wanna say probably close to almost a year. And last, those two days were the first time I don't know what happened. The The place where we drop off the test says FedEx picked them up. What happened from the time FedEx picked them up to the time they were supposed to have been dropped at the laboratory, I, I don't know. When we tried to trace them with the, the tracing tracking number, they couldn't even find the tracking number. Those things happen. I can tell you that the tests have been that have been dropped off since those two days, we've already received some results back from those tests and they have been picked up. What have we done in the meantime to help that situation? We now are doing a double drop off, a, a, a double pickup, I should say. We now have FedEx coming to Southern Kern for one pickup daily, and then we are continuing to drop the later evening uh, between five and six uh, daily. If there are additional tests, FedEx picks up at about 3.30 uh, from our district. And then anything that comes into the testing center after that, we still drop off between five and usually about five and 5.30. So that's uh, apologies. We, believe me, we called a lot of people to have to tell them that we don't know where your test is. 
why, you know, I, I certainly hope someone didn't steal a box or two of tests because they were probably terribly disappointed. Um, so uh, with regard to um, increase in um, cabinet over here, uh, we had a, an employee uh, um, retire and it's very, it, it's, it's critical in human resources that the person who mans the human resources department be a certificated employee. So it gave me an opportunity uh, when, uh, when uh, an employee retired to be able to move um, a trained employee into that department and then that, that left open uh, uh, a position to then move someone into the curriculum and instruction uh, department. And so that's basically what happened there. Oh, it's you, more of a shift around the it, it was kind of a shift and and the, the, the person who retired that that portion of that person's salary then just kind of got shifted over to the other position. I think for any district to function with a, a high level of accuracy and rigor, you have to have, as I always say to my cabinet members every Tuesday morning, you have to have the right people on the bus in these positions. And, I, and I'm very, very proud of my cabinet team now, a group of highly effective, hardworking people. So, so I really believe that that this district will move forward uh, with, with their leadership. So that answers the, that question. And the person who moved into that new position was certificated. Other one that was brought in to the district office was already trained and knew what she was doing in that position. Well, thank you very much so, for that for that additional information. Yes. Add that in there. Thank you, thank you, Dwayne. Um, and so let's see, uh, I am in negotiations. We uh, talked today uh, through email with uh, Anna, who is the CSEA rep uh, for Southern Curd. And we've just been, um, the president has been out for a little while. So we've just been kind of tossing days back and forth that I can get all my team and, and, and all of your team could get together. We have scheduled a negotiation day for September 24th. And so we're, um, we're looking forward to sitting down and actually going over. We have uh, the proposal submitted by a CSEA was put on the board agenda. Uh, I believe it was two board meetings ago along with our proposed CSEA. So there's a few articles there. Of course, salary and benefits is one of them uh, that that uh, we both will be discussing in those negotiations. Yeah. Remind me some of the others. Yes. Um, so one of the questions is about COVID stipend. Oh yes, COVID stipend. I want I want I want everybody to remember that COVID started for us in March of 2020. We were we were uh, one day away from spring break. And I remember this clearly because we, we've gone through 19, how many ever months now of pure COVID. It's the stuff that gets uh, embedded in your brain. I remember asking Kern County Superintendent of School, can I stay open one more day because then I'll be on spring break and COVID will go away and we'll be back after spring break. That was my mindset at the time. And she said, no, you need to close down. So from the time we started the, the contact tracing, I want you to know that the three people that are to get that stipend have been doing this for a year, receiving nothing. They, they have other jobs. One's an accountant, one's in HR. Sometimes they're here working overtime, making phone calls, doing contact tracing. So we're not taking money from general funds to give them this stipend. There, we received, and oh, Robert's gonna kill me because I don't think I wrote it down, uh, what it was, hopefully Robert will remember. We received $110,000 primarily for this reason, to man our testing center and to provide additional stipends to make sure that we are contact tracing, make sure that we are um, you know, following who's tested positive or who hasn't. 
And so I really felt that these three people that are on the board agenda who have done it without asking really for anything, just continue to do it and, and do their regular job. You know, the never one time have they come to me and said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to be, be doing this COVID because it's not easy. It's not easy to contact Trace. Um, so I, I, I stand very firmly that if anybody deserved this stipend, these three people do. And they're still doing it every single day while doing their, their regular job. So it's above and beyond is what I call it. They deserve the above and beyond award for for this. So, and, and they've actually been doing it now for, I don't know, probably over a year for us. So, so that was that. With regard to your question about would we allow uh, employees who are under, you know, I, I where's the hand? Right, right here. <laughs> Hide from me, man. This is a, probably an HR question, but I'm just going to mosey out on that plank a little bit and say, I would think right now would be a perfect time for us to be able to put that in place because we do, you know, we, we keep we keep flying positions and flying them and flying them, and we're just not getting the applicants. I, I look at Raleigh and Browns and Maintenance sometimes, and oh my gosh, I, I want to learn how to drive a tractor so I could possibly help in some way because there's just not enough people out there. But uh, Leanne, I'd, I'd like to ask you to look into that for us and see if we can maybe. I mean, we've even tossed around, like, even if just as not a full but a, a long term sub. Yeah. Because I'm willing to work. There is a position I was willing to work in. You know, there's multiple positions of multiple employees that have come to me and said, well, hey, you know, I, I could do that. You know, like, I'm a school instructor, I have, you know, uh, parent educators or even cafeteria staff that work two, three hours, and they're like, well, I can still do that, and not go over my hours. Why yeah. Why can't I do it? Yeah. Um, That's, and right and now I, we're hurting. <laughs> we are hurting, and we have, like, Friday evening, I needed um, custodial staff at RES to disinfect and clean, and so we, we gave overtime to, I think, three or four of them that went over there Friday evening just to make sure that that staff at that site returned Monday to a clean uh, and healthy site. So, uh, Leanne, I'm going to put that on your card, and and this will look we'll look into doing something like this to help our, and our situation. That, will you let us know? Is there anything out there saying that we can't do that? Well, why are they feeling they can't do it? There um, must be something there. I don't know what the reasoning was, because this is the first district that I've worked in where you can't do that, because every other district I've worked in, it's like, as long as you don't exceed your eight hours, you're fine to work multiple positions. So I honestly don't know what the reasoning is. We will look into the contracts, but I will look. But if there's any feasible way, I love the idea, and I think it's, Right now, we have to. We're a team. Those of us who are here, we are the team, you know. Uh, and um, so, if we can help our situation by maybe doing another job part time or something, then it's certainly better than waiting for somebody to apply for a job and seeing that day after day after day there's just no one out there. Uh, you know, people say sometimes there's just not a lot of workforce out there right now. People don't really necessarily want to apply for jobs so i don't know i'm not going to judge but but i think that's a great idea so it, it, it was there anything else yes uh one of the ones that i'm getting a lot of questions about every time an email goes out with the mask mandate and i know it's very clear but there is one thing that a lot of the um a lot of our employees were uncertain about in your last email you said that if you are working in pe and you are outside, you do not need to wear a mask, correct? Yes. But if you are a regular employee, so let's say a teacher is outside with a class, does that teacher need to have a mask on? Yeah, the reason and, and the answer to that is yes. Here here's here's my mindset. First of all, thank you for calling it a mandate. It is the law. It's not uh, Southern Kern, it's not a law created by this board or me. Uh, they took an oath to abide by the law. And the law says that uh, our employees either have to show proof of vaccination or they have to just test every week. We don't, we're not, we're concerned about what the results are, but really we just want them to test for their own protection. So the, the 
said about the physical education and the kids is that they're out there actually doing warm-ups and game activity, etc. We don't. The, the, the weather has been pretty hot. Uh, we we want them to. Uh, we don't want kids passing out out there, and that's why I, I advise that all the elementary children have also their water bottles with them. I, we we sent that notice home, um, etc. Teachers walking are still. I mean, walking with their class or whatever, some for protection, not only for the teacher, but for the students. And so that is why really, if at all possible, we want them when they're with the kids outside uh, to have the masks on. Obviously, if the teacher is eating or any staff member, any staff member is eating in a room by themselves or even in a room with other colleagues, you know, the best thing is to distance space. We know that if they're eating or drinking, the mask is going to be pulled down. So we get, we understand that. We are, uh, we've asked our uh, elementary uh, administrators to distance space the kids. Mr. Irving bought them again additional stickers so that uh, they can place them all over the cafeteria tables so the kids know exactly where to sit. And those tables are cleaned um, after every um lunch. So th those are the reasons we're, we're following the mandate. Sometimes people don't understand. They think that if, if a child in a class uh, comes down with a positive test, that we need to shut down the whole class or inform everybody. There's HIPAA laws that protect people from knowing who has tested positive. And, and, we, and we follow the, the uh, guidelines and requirements to to alienate who really does need to be uh, contacted and informed that their child has been exposed. Now the mandate now says if the child, even if the child has been exposed, wearing a mask and, and is asymptomatic, they may re remain in school as long as they test once. So there are, my COVID team, uh, you know, that $10,000 may sound like a lot of money, but the number of phone calls and emails that they answer every day is, all three of them is, I don't know that anybody would really want to do that work. I'm, I'm just grateful that they've, they've hung in with it this long. I think where the communication comes in, because, you know, it, when we see that, and then we're not knowing exactly the time frame, what it entails, like where it's coming from. So it's I from the time they get here mostly until sometimes after their regular work hours. All right, and on, on the communication yeah. part of things, when you guys send us an email, let's send an email and ask questions. Let's not send an email and just complain. Mm -hmm. We're reading complaints for five minutes because then it's like. What do you want me to answer? You're not asking me a question. You're just, I feel like you're just venting to me. I would definitely it's, say it's a lack of professionalism. Right. Well, and another thing is, man, when you start, uh, they start helping out doing extra things during the working hours, mm -hmm. let me know because I've noticed in the past, I've seen it at some school sites I was at, you ask someone to go do something else, and I put it. It's not in my job description, or there's a big group of people that are willing to work extra jobs. And then when it comes down to it, nobody wants to do it. So I, I will watch out for that. And not only that, but as a union rep, don't you have access to Leanne? Don't you have access to Barbara if you ask? Rather than bring out all these things that you don't have the answers for, you can get the answers without having to bring it out. I'm not saying don't bring it out publicly because we see a lot of the emails, but I'm not going to answer them. They're going to go straight to this is Gaines. And it's just as easy for you to set up a meeting rather than get up in a thing and say, hey, get your answers. Rather than, and then you'll have it. And if we need to do it publicly, we can do it publicly. The but, issue is there's so many to address at this moment. It would be, it would take me hours to get back to everybody. The amount of emails that I received and phone calls and I'm not having Gary here right now and me being new. To the well, no, no, I'm just saying when you get all these questions, you can set up a time to go talk and discuss it. 
rather than because we're seeing I've seen a lot. Uh, I know he's seen it, and I've seen a couple others. We're getting a lot of Facebook comments out there that people are, and some of this stuff is coming out there, and it's misinformation. And you know what happens with Facebook? Misinformation turns into chaos, and you can easily handle that. Like the Facebook network's good. Yeah, <laughs> but you can still talk to her and still get your information. I mean, you know, and keep it internally. And then, you know, the guy will find out about it. Don't we'll, you know, that's nothing you don't have to worry about. But the thing is, is that it turns into a lot of misinformation going out. And, and um, but even me communicating, me giving an email, setting up a meeting with Leanne, taking their time, because I know we're going to make for everything that comes along. It doesn't all come along in one show. No, but you got a nice long laundry list. Yes. Okay, when you get your laundry list, then weeks. you can set up the meeting. Yeah. Because I've called, and you can ask Miss Lacey, you can ask Leanne, you can ask, I've even spoken to Barbara on the phone multiple times. It has been so many inquiries and so many questions, and then we feel like the answers that we're giving, or the answers that some of these employees are getting are different from the answers that other employees are getting. So rather than he said, she said, because that's what it is if I'm going to them and then going to the other person, if we're doing it publicly and then we're getting the answers and they are recorded, there's no he said, she said. And also, I, I send out emails to the entire staff often, and sometimes it's even if they read it in black and white, people's perception of what it says sometimes, I can't control that. So I just have to resend it out or I try to explain. But please always feel that uh, you can come and see me because I have a lot of people who email me and call me or come into my office, just drop by on a daily basis. And we really, Miss um, Sally and I try to get through to see every single one of them. Would they may have to come back a few minutes later? But uh, we really try to see everybody because I, I really want everybody to understand what is, and I want them to understand that the mandate, uh, Kern County Superintendent of Schools is a phenomenal, um, <laughs> they do a phenomenal job protecting and overseeing their 46 school districts, and they provide us with a, a wealth of information, and uh, the uh, California um, Department of Public Health is at every one of our meetings, sometimes we meet two or three times a week, and there are changes and updates periodically. Just had a new update the other day. So uh, I things change. I always welcome people to uh, come and, and ask me questions and, and to set it, to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. And Superintendent Dave, I really appreciate you taking my phone call the other day. But well, like I said, I know you were busy. That took a, a bunch of time just answering one question. So wanted to address it for everybody that's asking me and just to make sure that we can set up our community It's okay. It's my, it's my job and I have no problem doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, my list has grown in the last few minutes. Okay. Um, Mr. Vinslev, please remember your union leaders have full-time jobs. That we do this in addition to our full-time jobs. I've been doing it for 25 years, and I've spent thousands of hours helping the district in its quest to be successful. And I haven't gotten paid dime one to do it. So when you say just set up a meeting, that means I've got to get a substitute for my classroom, not teach my students, so that I can go meet with the district administration to be able to do that. I agree with you. Our district administration does a great job in responding to uh, our concerns, but it's not quite as easy as it seems. I'm also going to stick my nose in where it doesn't belong because that's what I do best. Um, the one thing in what uh, Ms. Mitchell, right? Bell. I'm not going to say anything about being a former student. Going up there a bit. Uh, but great job, by the way. Welcome. Um, the one thing I would say about what you're discussing regarding these, not added positions, but the ability to work double positions and about the stipends that the district has got on the board agenda tonight, is RTA is adamant 
that whenever we have any kind of a position that gives somebody an opportunity to earn extra money, that it be posted and fairly available to everybody within the bargaining unit to be able to apply for it. Um, and I know there are certain situations that limit, I know there are certain situations that limit who really can be considered, um, but from a CSEA standpoint, that's one thing I would be concerned about with these um, two and three job positions, and even how the, the stipends on tonight's board agenda were, were decided and put into place. Um, the equally available. Regarding what Mr. Moore said, regarding asking a question rather than just sending a complaint, I did have one item on my agenda tonight that I did send an email to Mr. Bender this week, um, I think it was on Monday, with a CC to all of the board members. And I was just double checking, uh, but there was a question in there. It wasn't just a complaint. And, and I don't even think I worded it as a complaint, but there was a question in there. My, my question, not in the email, is was my email received by the board because I didn't get a response, even a thank you got it from any of the board members. So was it received? Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, it was received. Okay. We might respond. That's what I'm trying yeah, to tell you. We won't respond. And that was my question: Is can you respond? No. If no. I send it, can I finish my question? Sorry. If I send it to one of you, can you respond? No, I will not respond. I will forward it on, but I will not respond. If I asked your opinion about an issue as a board member, you would not respond? Would you respond to a community member? Would you respond generally? Let, let, let me put it to you this way. As a board member, what we do here, we can only do as a board. As a community member and as a board member outside, the answer is, is that if it's responsible to, yes. But in most cases, they have in that will go to Mrs. Gaines. And that's the way that I've always operated, even before, because it's not my idea. The rule of thumb is, is that there's only two people in the group for the board. That's Mr. Gutierrez and Mrs. Gaines. And that's the way that it's been that way for yeah. as long as I can remember. Is it reasonable to expect a response just to say it was received or not even that? You don't have a way to get that. Yes, Jim, I will respond to that. I really appreciated it. And I'm taking it deep concern about it, and I'm considering it deeply, uh, what you told me, because I believe that's something that your personal belief and mine, and I've been really trying to look at it in your eyes. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not going to try to change anybody's personal and I, belief. But I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I just, want to, to look at it like, like everyone else. I don't want, it's my belief, and I'm really strong on it still, but I want to be considered to other people's beliefs too, what they believe. So I, I read your email I, several times. I looked at it maybe a few more times after just reading it. And it got me thinking some more. And that's, I haven't figured out how to respond or what I'm, where I'm at on it. There were some things I was going to say tonight about it, but I didn't want to because I'm considering what you said. And I, right. But he's just asking when, when, when he sends us an email as a board, it was just yeah, to me it was more personally yeah, to me. Yeah. And I should have probably said thanks, Jim. But I didn't because I wanted to really consider it. Oh. Really give it some thought. And I copied the board because the question within my email was directed at all the board members because it's a very critical and important question yeah. about the state of our district. I know as well as anybody the role of the board role of the superintendent and the role of the bargaining units and I've always strived tremendously to respect those boundaries um, and I respect you know the position the board members have put in so my question tonight was very simply was the email received and my follow-up question was if I email all of you based on the Brown app are you allowed to respond and probably possibly not yeah but if I email two, one or two of you, are you allowed to respond to respond by the front? Uh, it's kind of iffy because if we respond and we all say yes to something, uh, that is a violation of the Brown Act as a 
that we all agree on that subject. It's polling. It's polling. It, it is poll. So, but the only thing we could do would be to say thank you for the email, basically. And but we cannot respond at all to the question or whatever it's in which and, and which I appreciate from the district administration. They all get my emails. And I appreciate when they just respond real quick like got it, thanks. You know, something like that. Just so that I know uh, you got through. Um, okay. And I, I'm good with it. If, if if the role of the board by communication is to receive information and you can personally di digest it and we understand that that's that's the playing field. Yeah, you know, I'm fine with that, and I understand it fully. Yeah, it just I'm always real cautious about not violating any of the mm -hmm. Sweet Brown Act laws, right? Uh, because you get real trouble, and I, I just nine out of ten times I will not respond to any email that somebody sent me other than uh, Barbara that she needs something strictly from me, and she knows not to email everybody; just emails me. Yeah, and, and like I said, I also try to respect these meetings in terms of following Robert's rule of order, knowing when I'm not, it's not appropriate for me to speak unless the board gives me that opportunity. Um, next, I will tell you this I will start sending you. Uh, thank you, got it. Something like, I know you all get hundreds of emails every day. So do I. I get it from the state, I get them from here, I get them from school staff, uh, community members. I'm the senator of student enrollment at ABC, so I'm constantly getting emails from there. Well, and I'm getting emails from my job, so I mean, it's hard to keep up and say, okay, got it. I, I agree. And, and I think Mr. Gutierrez would, uh, would agree with me that in the 20 years we uh, sat across the table from each other in these meetings, I probably sent him 10 emails, yeah. uh, maybe 15 at the most. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going after the board or or directing my questions at the board on a, on a constant basis uh, rta believes that our our position is to work with the superintendent and with the district administration over the issues that that are brought to us um, and and at any time if, if the reports that i give at these board meetings you feel um don't provide you with any kind of positive benefit you may not agree with what i'm saying but you know you may want to hear it if, if you think that what i'm doing in my position as rta president is counterproductive to these meetings let me know let me know because i want you to have that information but in an appropriate manner and go, go back to the one thing uh a couple of things for the one I'll take any of your emails anytime. But no, I will. Okay, I'll agree with what the way. What said you said, I'll just say, like, thank you, and that's all you need to get. The other point of the reasons why that when I saw your email, I look at it, that is Mr. Bender's position. Doesn't necessarily, it's mine, doesn't necessarily, Sonny's, Dwayne's, Mario's, Mrs. Gaines. I don't want to answer that position. You know you what I'm saying? That's his position. Whether I agree with it or disagree with it, that's me, I, and I'm not going to go express that. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why I would not have answered something like that as well. Well, again, most of the email was informational, yep. not necessarily about Mr. Uh, Bender's position. Uh, and I and, and Jim, I appreciate you know, what you said earlier. I really, really do. Um, it was informational for the whole board and a question for the whole board. But yes, it, it was. It was. It was addressed to Mr. Bender with copies to the rest of the board. I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm getting continued requests from teachers uh, to have board meetings in a larger venue as often as possible so that there is room to attend. Um, I got to tell you, I'm in the classroom every day with you know, and, and other teachers from anywhere from 20 to 35 students, and, and every single day, every single period, I'm uncomfortable. I am greatly uncomfortable sitting here right now. Um, so, a larger venue, I know other teachers want to attend. I know personally I would feel more comfortable if we had that opportunity. Uh, another item is that um, I, I think was brought up by Fallon also that uh, there are many questions from teachers regarding the procedures and protocols with positive tests of students and or staff. But important to note, per Mrs. Gaines' request, 
what I'm doing is continually referring uh, those questions to the district's email address for the COVID team because I don't know all the answers. And I'm teaching five classes a day, and, and I want them to have the, the direct contact. And as Valen said, rather than getting secondhand information, getting the firsthand information. So I do appreciate the time and effort those people are putting in and have put in in the past. Right. Uh, uh, I'm going to forward it then under the consent uh, items or uh, is a delay to the outlet that at the last one meeting, Barbara spoke about where they're going to open or the ribbon cutting. I just want to uh, give them a shout out and say thank you once again for uh, donating to the district. We uh, really appreciate it and are glad to have them as uh, a new uh, member of the community. At least as a business as a member of the community. So, um, the official grant title for um, CDP 8 is uh, the as the COVID-19 school testing operational support grant, and this is what is funding those stipends as well as the cost of shipping and um, all of that in terms of, this is money from the uh, California Department of Public Health, this is not general fund money, this is Frankly, money that I didn't know existed until we got an email about it three or four weeks ago. So, um, they've uh, given us a grant that covers the cost of the stipends, the salary of the staff uh, working in the testing center, the cost of uh, uh, transporting the uh, tests, even especially as we uh, increase the number of uh, outgoing shipments a day to uh, mediate some of the uh, increased uh, um, need for the testing center where um, the governor's uh, vaccine uh, or testing mandate came out in the middle of our first day of school. So uh, we got all of 16 hours heads up on it. So we've moved this quickly and unfortunately not as efficiently as we would like, but um, while we have the testing center open in February, from February to June, there were 154 samples that were scanned at the testing center. Um, from the first day of school through today, we're at 471 already. So the volume has picked up tremendously over the last couple of weeks due to this mandate and We've tried to pivot and adjust and become more of a public health center than uh, my finance degree uh, ever prepared me for. Um, we didn't cover pandemics, uh, well, between bombs and different stocks, but we're trying to our best and we're trying to make sure that this works and we've had some stumbling blocks with the logistics portion of it that we hopefully have you know, as we explore options and other ways of doing things, continue to get better at. It's not, you know, we're not looking at, okay, well, we met the part where we did the test and after that we, you know, wipe our hands. We want, you know, everyone who's gone down there to test to make sure that we get the results in a timely manner. So there's um, a little bit of information on the, the testing center there. Um, Last uh, board meeting, uh, part of the goal, goals and you know plans for the board was the uh, hydration stations, where we're all aware that the well water at the high school is not uh, super good. Um, we, typically, we typically don't have to post warnings about how good the water is, um, but uh, to mediate that temporarily while we you know. Um, have plans to be connected to uh, the domestic water instead of just the well for the high school. Um, we've increased the uh, amount of sparklets dispensers and uh, sparklets jugs at the high school. Uh, tomorrow, uh, another dispenser and more bottled water will be delivered uh, from sparklets. And um, more research is being done on a long term solution other than other than the sparklets. 
if there's a permanent fixture installed anywhere that has the proper filters that address the needs of the water, that you know, we you know, don't wind up with something that's really only focused on rusted lead and really we need something else to deal with arsenic or whatever else that might be contaminating. So we're doing more research on that to find a suitable solution that uh, addresses uh, both the need for water, but uh, make sure that the filters are just not, otherwise it's kind of a moot point and some cross. And um, that is it for me right now. I work the um, bottled water. It's all free, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 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 And that is one dollar. So I do want to tell you they can do that. And then we have two large igloo um, containers now, um, so they can refill water bottles too. We just want to make sure, Mrs. Zakin and Mr. Shevlin, that the new dispensers that are arriving on your site are accessible to the students, not only the entire school day, but anyone who's in a, involved in an after school program or sport could have access to that water the entire day. Thank you. Assistant uh, Superintendent Lacey. Well, our Williams visits were last Friday and this past Monday. They went pretty well. We did have um, one small issue at one of the elementaries where we already um, had fixed that. Um, there were just a few uh, books missing from a uh, one of the special education classrooms, and we've already ordered those, and they're ready to go. Um, and any other, uh, the other elementary school had a, a minor issue with some facilities, but we've got that fixed as well. So everything is uh, went well with the Williams visit, um, as usual. The um, reports I've gotten from all the site administrators is um, that the Kern County Superintendent of School um, personnel that came out to do the visit had nothing but awesome things to say about our, our staff, our students, and our schools. So um, it went pretty well. Um, Noemi and April have been conducting the LPAC uh, testing for all of our uh, new initial testing, I should say, for all of the new enrolling students that have come in that haven't been assessed in, in yet. So they uh, are, have a few students, I think, left at the high school and maybe one or two other at, at other schools that just haven't been able to touch that school. Um, and so they should be getting that done by either this Friday or early next week, which is within that 30-day timeline that they have to be conducted. Um, I did get to visit uh, Roseman, um, or excuse me, Rare Earth High School and Abraham Lincoln for my num uh, my monthly meeting um, with them this uh, past Monday. Uh, I visited classrooms, got to see the teachers and the students in class. And I can tell you that every class I walked into, and I walked into every one of them, the students in there were working diligently. Um, I got to see a, a Celis, um firsthand, which I've heard lots of different things about it, but it was really nice to see the students working on it, taking notes like um, they're asked to do. Um, and they were all working um, hard, which was, it was really nice to see. Um, so I just was really impressed with, with the positive learning environment that, uh, the school has to come, and, and kudos to Nino and the staff over there. It was a, a really good visit, and I, I did enjoy going over there. Um, I've been uh, researching um, K-2 intervention programs uh, to amp up instruction in phonics and things to go along with one of the board goals. And I set up um, one uh, presentation for Barbara and I next week, so I'm Mrs. Gaines, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that as well. So hopefully that will um, uh, be a little intervention program to help us with our our students in the uh, lower elementary grades. Also, I still continue to meet with parents um, regarding uh, independent study transfers. Um, so hopefully um, soon that will start to slowly lessen. Thank you. Uh, Associate Superintendent uh, Argus. 
All right. Over in HR, we are very, very busy um, trying to fill all of those open spots that we have. Um, we're kind of getting down to um, just a few open spots, but um, as has been mentioned, um, substitutes certainly are at a premium, um, but there are a couple, as you'll notice on the board agenda, we have found a few. So, um, so that's kind of exciting. Um, one of the things about substitutes, um, and this is mainly for uh, the certificate or the teaching substitutes, is a lot of people that have been subs in the past, um, they found jobs this year due to our you know, significant teacher shortage. Um, and so we're sharing a very small pool of people between you know, our district and then they also are in um, subbing in other districts as well. So, um, you know, but we certainly are, um, you know, calling, calling in people and you know, encouraging them to you know, come up Southern Kern and, and sub for us out here. So um, constantly looking for additional staff. Um, as far as, you know, our classified staff wanting to sub, um, we do definitely have some areas that's really a, a hard, um, a lot of those have, have been very difficult to fill. Um, tomorrow we are going to be doing some interviews for um, kindergarten teachers. We have a spot in each one of our elementaries. Um, we do have about four candidates for, um, for those two positions. Um, we're going to be doing some CSO um, interviews on Friday. Um, so we'll certainly just, you know, trying to keep up um, and get those spots filled. We still are, are short a couple of certificated special ed teachers. Um, you know, but we are, you know, continuing to look. We're actually short three. Um, we're still short as an SDC at the high school due to overages. We're short an RSP teacher at the high school. And then um, fortunately we have a um, a sub in our mod severe at our elementary site, but um, you know, still um, still continue to look for those special ed teachers. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President Richards. I just want to say good evening and a welcome um, everyone who is joining us this evening. I want to thank, um, first of all, our site administrators who are here and also our crossing guards who uh, joined us this evening. Thank you for uh, just being here and, and the support. We are now in week three of school and uh, I tell you, uh, we have overcome a lot of obstacles in the past three weeks, uh, and uh, traffic at Rosemary Elementary was one. Um, we're still fighting a good fight there, but it, it, the traffic situation has uh, gotten uh, better there. Thank you, Mr. Mesa and uh, uh, Ms. Compton for all the work that you do every day to to get our kids uh, in, inside the campus safe. Um, COVID is a difficult time. I'm, I'm just going to say this is difficult, not only for Southern Kern and our, our, our site, uh, our district team and the site team, but for the teachers and the parents and the students, we're all um, really still charting uh, these waters that Every single day, we get new mandates, or we get the the, the uh, all the, uh, guidelines change. So we are doing our very, very best. We do follow the California Department of Public Health and Kern County Public Health. Uh, I mean, I, I meet regularly with uh, the uh, Kern County Superintendent of Schools to get the updates on everything. So. I just ask for our parents and our staff members, please uh, continue um, your patience and uh, hopefully the prediction is that we're going to reach uh, the peak and this we should be coming down the other side of that in the next couple of weeks. So I just ask for everybody's grace during this time. Uh, I have the pleasure of, uh, of meeting with Captain Wallace and Captain Cahill, our cadet corps captains from the high school in Tropico this past week. And uh, one of the things that uh, I learned about it with, at current county superintendent of schools is a program called Honor Flight. And Honor Flight is um, where our World War II veterans, our Korean veterans, and our Vietnam veterans 
um, our money is being raised to take them from uh, California to Washington, D.C. so they can spend two or three days there visiting all the uh, memorials, uh, especially the ones for the war that they served in. So I, I, I wanted to, uh, coming from a, a military family, I wanted to get Captain Flawless and uh, Captain Cahill's um, input on this and, and sit down with them and, and say, how can we help with this? So we're going to be doing a couple of uh, projects in the next few months uh, to support this, this uh, honor flight and also having our cadet corps just write letters of appreciation to all of our veterans. And what happens is they read these letters on the flight from, from LA to Washington, D.C. So they were very excited and, they, and of course they're gonna um, come up with some even uh, better ideas. So um, just uh, wanna remind everybody that back to school night at Tropico is this Thursday. It will be held via Zoom or via Google Meets. And on September 8th, we will have this back to school night at the high schools, grades nine through 12. And it will also be held out of uh, taking an abundance of caution to protect our families and staff. It'll also be held um, via Zoom and Google Meet. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Alexi. Board President, Board Members, Superintendent Gaines, Cabinet Members and Guests. I'm Alexi Finch, uh, ASU President, and I'm going to start the start of the school year. We had our first spirit week August 23rd through the 27th. Seniors have their senior sunrise on the 27th. Volleyball and football both have started their season and have already had their first games. Uh, the varsity girls for volleyball also have a mammoth tournament next weekend. We had cheer tryouts during the week of August 24th through the 27th. We had a club rush scheduled for September 7th and September 8th during both lunches in hopes to get more students involved in our campus. Cadet Corps went to the grocery outlet for their grand opening and are planning a 9-11 ceremony, and we also are starting a plan for home fun. As you can see, we have had a successful start to this school year. Thank you for your time. And it's very nice to have you on board with us. Yep. Okay, for communication, setting. I need to see my background. Great. Um, it's like kind of what you were saying, uh, Barbara. We have to be flexible. Things change. People are getting frustrated, and it's you know it's better than it was before when it started. The kids could be at home still. Um, they're in school, and there's a lot of uh, people need to be a little more flexible and just have a little more patience. And it's difficult, but we can do this together. We just need to have a little more patience with each other and more communication and a little more transparency. And um, we've definitely come a long way from where we started. And if we just kind of sit together and communicate with each other, we're, we're gonna get through this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Yes, sir. Okay. Just to reiterate, uh, communications, uh, one, is, one of my backgrounds is communications. We need to know what's going on. We will take your emails. We're not going to respond to them because of potential Brown Act and other violations. But doesn't mean that we don't see them. Doesn't mean that they don't get passed on. Ask Mrs. Gaines because she's seen a lot of my emails with a lot of um, uh, snap, uh, you know, uh, snapshots of certain things and she has responded so keep the communications coming this one will the next two items will make mrs Akinini kind of happy i'm going to bring it up tonight um because uh i was at the football game friday night and i got a discussion about we need to have some kind of a cart an electric cart or a motorized cart so in case something happens they can get the kids off uh, I watched Mr. Shetland uh, try to wrangle out five uh, bottles, of, huge bottles of water. It would have been nice for him to have something like that rather than a, a little 
whole thing to go out. But most of the schools in the area do have carts, and I'm going to ask that we probably sometime down the line consider uh, purchasing a cart. Um, I want to thank uh, Raleigh um, and his crew for marking the field properly. Uh, that made it a lot easier for the referees. Uh, and one of the items that I mentioned to Mrs. Aglini is we need uh, four more of the pylons uh, because they're missing in the end zone. So hopefully she's working to get those. As far as schools, uh, everything, I haven't seen too much to any complaints or anything about other than some of the weird stuff that we see it on Facebook, but a lot of it is just not, not answerable. So if you've got complaints, please call the site administrators over the district. I'm, that's done for me for now. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody watching. Thank you for you guys all coming out tonight. Um, Football game Friday night. I expect from students, staff, parents, community members, whoever you are, if you're there, act right. It's just the right thing to do. It's common sense because that's what keeps these kids going. But if we have violence and things going on like that, like throwing trash onto the field, let's just act right so we can keep going to these events. Two. Um, and I lose my train of thought too much. I'll pick up on that high school football game. I got it. We need to make sure that, that uh, football games are safe. I know there's a uh, superintendent is, is all over it already. Um, for us to have a school board meeting and not to address the problem that we did have, I don't think would be right. But we need to um, to really maintain order out there, be safe. It's supposed to be a good, fun time. And unfortunately, the times we live in, there is people that want to come in and have some problems. So I think we need to discuss on maybe put an agenda or whatever we can do on some solutions. Let's listen to some. I think one that we should start is, is um, no um, nobody except for students with IDs from the schools to be on the games. I mean, and the parents hate to have to do that to everybody out there. But the main thing is to have fun and be safe out there. And if they're going to make it that way, um, it, it's it's not right for those who come to enjoy a game to be in danger. Uh, I don't like that. Also, I'd like to open up our meetings. Um, is there any way we can start meeting at uh, other elementary school or something for the board meetings? We, we actually could, Mr. Bender. We just will still have to require the mask, yes. but absolutely we can. Yes, if we could do that, get more people and listen to more opinions, and I'd appreciate that. And I did notice also the $10,000 siphon um, that caught my attention. But I do put my trust in my superintendent that she's making the right choices and the jobs are difficult and deserve that. Um, I would like, though, just so we have more of a knowledge of it, if one of them could come maybe to a meeting and sort of give us an overview of the process and how long it takes and just so we all as a board have a better understanding of it. I know we could go in there and watch a test of it, but it'd be easier if they just give us a quick 10, 15 minute rundown on from the time the student or, or employee comes in, what takes place, and from that, just some, a quick rundown. I think that would be really helpful. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you, everybody. Um, I just want to thank everybody for your uh, logging in and being here in person. Um, you guys have addressed everything that I would normally address. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, we will continue on. Uh, do we have any comments from the public? No, we don't. 
the final report, so we will dispense with that. Uh, consent items A through K. Does anybody have any questions? No, I'll move to accept. Motion by Red Slip. Wait, yeah. you, hold on. Like, so you guys are saying that the same place you always do? Yeah. Okay. So we know they're safe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the quality of the Okay. Okay. So, second by more. Second by more. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second review of uh, and approval of the list of policies uh, June 2021. Does anybody have any questions on any of the policies? Uh, just one quick question on the school resource officers. Is this a totally new policy for them? Um, it is a new policy. Um, unfortunately for us, we don't have any school resource officers. Okay. This, this is the different than okay. a CSO. A CSO. Yes. Okay. This, this is more um, that, like what we had uh, at EZ yeah. and right. uh, that's a uh, resource officer. Yeah. He is basically assigned to our school. If he has other duties to do, he can't, but we were would be his primary obligation. Right. Right, I remember. Yes, we don't have one. Okay. I would love to have one. Uh, I would have to agree with you, especially after Friday night. Yeah. Uh, so here was it. I'll make a motion. Move it by more. Second. Second by Pepper. All in favor? Aye. 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 CDPH safety measure for K-12 school uh, universal masking. Uh, this is just informational. Uh, all board members got a copy of the uh, state mandates. Yes, we have to have. Uh, it was a request that somebody wanted to have. Uh, so we can see what the state actually requires. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the requirements? I don't think you really question it. It's coming down well, the, the mandates that the yeah, state it's, requires. It's coming here down from the state. It's, you could question it. Well, we could question it, but yeah, it's not going to do. It's not going to make any difference. Okay. I'm going to accept. Well, it's, it's just uh, uh, information. Like, is that all? Yeah. Oh, it's got a motion on it. I know, but it was just a, okay. That was just information. There's no action to be taken. Okay. Uh, we already did redesign the Approve the following list of personnel items. Does anybody have any question on personnel or the stipends that are on personnel? I'll second. Motion by Mr. Bender, seconded by Mr. Fillet. All in favor? Signing the virus. We reserve the right to adjourn to our school board member. Yep. Seeking <laughs> the motion. Seconded. Seconded by uh, Bender. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We need that. Her. Okay. We are done. I did not. I have my.